Hello once again and welcome back to the Gaming of Year Retro or, or something, I can't really remember. Back in episode 11 we just played Street Games, Mega Man 2, Lolo and Snake Rattle and Roll. Coming up in episode 12 we'll have Princess Tomato, uh, Toe Jam and Earl and Blaster Master. So, what games did I miss somewhere in the middle? Let's find out. Did anyone ever own one of these books? I did. I used to read this from cover to cover, analysing every screenshot and trying to decide which games would be worth playing. In hindsight, they're really not very good books, but I was reminded of a game featured in here that I desperately wanted to play back in the day, but never did. Totally rad. The screenshots here made my jaw drop with their awesomeness. Who wouldn't want to play this game? Look at it! Well, now it's time to add it into the year of retro gaming. Totally Rad is a port of a Japanese game called Magic John. The original told the story of a plucky young hero called John who learned magic from a mysterious magician called Mr. Pong before having his girlfriend kidnapped. In the Western translation, it was apparently decided to have the game written by Michelangelo. John became Skater Dude Jake. The girlfriend did a bit of growing up. And the dialogue is chock full of horrible 80s style Californian surfer dude lingo. So, Jake's like righteous girlfriend is called Allison, and this totally tubular magic coach is called Zeb. Apparently, they couldn't be bothered changing the letter on his like hat. Oops. So, now the game itself. It's a pretty standard side scrolling shoot em up with a few gnarly additions. Uh, okay, I'm gonna stop that now. Jake has 12 magic powers. If this game was released today, Jake would probably spend the majority of the game chasing down those powers and earning them before he could use them. <coughs> but in this game, he's got all of his magic powers right off the bat. There's a couple of spells to heal himself. He can stop time, he can give himself temporary invincibility, and there's a couple of different offensive magic spells, and Jake can also transform himself into three different forms. There's the eagle form for flying around, the fish form for swimming underwater, and the lion form. Arr. So as you can see, within the first second of playing, there's a lot of different ways you could choose to play this game. Of course, casting spells drains Jake's MP, which is like a total bummer, dude. Due to the MP demands on the spells, you actually have to be fairly frugal with the wand waving. I didn't often feel like casting an offensive or transformative spell because I was trying to conserve MP to heal myself. It would have been better if the healing spells had their own separate MP bar or something. Now to the reason I really wanted to play this game back in 91. Check out these awesome bosses. As actual bosses, they're fairly dull and have repetitive patterns, but wow! There weren't many NES games with characters that huge. Apart from a bit of flicker and some nasty slowdown, Totally Rad is actually a really nice looking game. Apart from its tiny little main character and the, the fairly dull enemy design. It's a bit annoying that there's a handful of really bleh enemies, like these annoying little turret things, and they're scattered throughout the entire game. The music's not too bad as well. This was definitely a latter day NES game where the developers had figured out how to make the most of the hardware. Look, overall, Totally Rad feels a bit insubstantial. There's only five levels, and there's not much variety in the enemies, but look, there's certainly worse games out there. It's okay. I'll say it sits. Next up is Journey to Silius. They were taking a journey somewhere else, but messed up on the navigation system. Oops, silly us. <laughs> silly us. Get, get, get it? I kill me. So this game was originally supposed to be the video game adaptation of the first Terminator movie. True story. Due to some kind of licensing issues, the Terminator game never happened, but Sunsoft just tweaked a few details and released the game anyway. You can definitely see elements of the Terminator in there, with the post-apocalyptic robots and whatnot, but they made the story about a boy looking to avenge his father. Whatever. Another interesting fact about this game is that the American version had a different main sprite to the rest of the world. He was originally a very generic looking armoured kind of guy, but the Americans had his head showing. Strangely, when the PAL version came out, he'd reverted back to the Japanese original model. Maybe for the same reasons the men were turned into robots in Contra, who knows. The graphics and the music in this one are both really good. There's detailed sprites and backgrounds and there's some catchy tunes as well. 
it's all too tempting with a game like this to go absolutely gung-ho and race through the level with guns blazing, but you soon discover that that's really not going to work here. You have to be thoughtful about how you approach each enemy and pattern memorization is a must. This is certainly a game for those who like a good challenge. It's damn hard in places and you only have three lives to beat a level before having to start it again. I doubt there'd be many people who have legitimately finished Journey to Silius. I wouldn't say it's quite a contra level of difficulty, you can take a few hits after all, but it's certainly up there. There's one thing that's been consistent since I started filling in the gaps of my list this year. So far all of the games I've played have only sat the test of time, which I guess makes sense since I've forgotten them in the first place. But with Journey to Silius, I think I'd be prepared to say that it stands. It's not the best of its genre, it's no Mega Man killer, but it controls well and it offers up a good challenge, and for folks who really love the run and gun style of game, I'd say this is one that they'd still get some joy from. So that's it for another in between episode, I wonder what games will be next. Hey look at this stuff, isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think my collection's complete? Peace out. <laughs>